Hey guys, Buffy Game back today, bringing another video, and today we're covering the Scar H again, or the Mark 17. However, this time we're going to be doing a really good off meta build how to outplay the meta here at the tail end of season three of Warzone with the Cold War integration. So, I'm definitely again on a Scar kick lately. I've been watching a lot of Grand Thumb, Mike over on that channel, as well as just other channels. Anything I can get my hands on Scar related content, I'm on a big Scar kick yet again. Um, and I wanted to use something very unconventional to outplay the meta and prove that it can be done again with probably, unfortunately, what is considered statistically one of the worst weapons in Warzone. However, again, if you use it correctly, I'm going to show you how to outplay the meta and how this scar is actually very viable if you use it correctly. So we're going to be going loud and proud with this build. I am not running a suppressor. It's probably one of my best solo gameplays ever. Uh, right up there. So we'll go ahead and build the weapon and then we'll get in and I'll walk you through this really good solo gameplay and we'll go against the meta here with this loud and proud Scar H. So back out here we see the final design for the Mark 17 or the Scar H, Scar Heavy. You can see we are not running a suppressor on this build. This is a very weird build um, looking at it outright but aesthetically I think it looks awesome and it performs much better than I expected. So Backing out here, we're going to strip this thing down. First off, what I'm using, um, I'm going to be using the Trader Blueprint on this. So you see the SCAR-17 here. If we go to the armory that I have available, we have the base SCAR, which is obviously a very aesthetically pleasing SCAR. Um, that's usually my go-to. However, my second favorite run is going to be the Trader. So this is a Season 1 Blueprint that I believe was in the Battle Pass, um, and it gives you that M-Lock. Uh, Midwest Industries M Lock Extended Handguard, or maybe it's not an M Lock. It might be maybe a not a key mod, but it's a Midwest Industries Extended Handguard, specifically for the Scar SSR or the Mark 20, which is the DMR variant of the Scar. So we're going to be running the Trader. However, some other blueprints do have this option. Um, I believe the Blank Stare is another option, but typically the Trader or the Base Scar is what I'm going to run with here. And then we'll go ahead. We'll go to the weapon and build this from scratch. So first off, I'm going to be running a compensator on this. So I wanted something, the SCAR has heavy recoil, and because of the build I'm using, I needed extra recoil control on this. So I'm going to be running a compensator instead of a mono suppressor. So the compensator is going to give us that vertical recoil control. The cons here are the ADS speed and the aim and stability, which I'm we're going to completely make up for that with the next attachment. But the compensator, so we will show up on the minimap. However, this is going to help us acquire targets quicker and put them down. So the compensator, we're gonna go loud. The idea here was to be mobile, ergonomic build, and kind of make a loud noises to scare, to scare people when I fire this thing. So it is very loud. So we'll run the compensator. Now the barrel option, we're actually gonna run the base barrel on this. So not only are we going no suppressor, we're also going base barrel, which I haven't used the base barrel on the SCAR really in a long time, uh, since season three of Modern Warfare for Warzone. You can see you have other options available here, um, but I'm going to be using the base barrel because I wanted to save that attachment and really build this thing up. So the laser, we're going to go with the tack laser. Now, this will make up for the negatives for the compensator. We're going to run it for the ADS speed, aim and stability, and the aim walking steadiness. So already those first two pros are making up for the, the cons that we got for the compensator. The con here is the laser is visible for enemies only when you're ADSing. So just be careful about when and how you're doing that. And really with this build and how we're using it, it's not a problem really at all. So we'll go ahead and run that. Now the optic, I wanted something because this is a heavy caliber weapon, 762 by 51 millimeter, I wanted something where I can engage at longer ranges if I need to, as well as be very effective at close range. So instead of a typical holographic sight, I want something there I can be have a magnified view. So I would typically on my scar, I, I usually like to run the hammer, which is the integral hybrid. And that's a really good one also because you have that top mount of Delta. However, I really like on this weapon the uh, the four times flip just because for the close quarters view with the EOTech there, the holograph, you get a better sight picture versus the integral hybrid with that top mounted red dot. So this will give us the ability to toggle from a one with the hollow to a four times. So I can engage at long range if I need to. Cons here are the ADS speed, which again, the laser is making up for that. So we'll go ahead and select that. Stock, we're going to leave the base stock, and obviously with this version of the Trader, that cheek rest there on the back is is adjusted up versus the base variant of the Scar, it is not. So we have the cheek rest, which is adjusted upward. We'll skip the perk, 
will also skip on their rear grip. And then for the ammunition, this is something I went back and forth. I tried it with 20 rounds. However, you can use it effectively, but you find yourself in a lot of bad situations. Uh, so I prefer the 30 rounds. So I gave up. I was typically running the base 20 round and running a rubberized grip tape for the extra recoil control. But I, I found that to be kind of more hassle than it was worth. So not really worth it. Ammunition, we're going to want the 30 rounds, so we'll increase from 20 to 30 rounds of 7.62x51. And the cons, again, ADS speed, movement speed. ADS speed isn't an issue with this. We'll just be moving slightly slower. And then for the underbarrel attachment here, obviously, we're going to want to go with the bipod foregrip. That'll give us the recoil control, as well as the crouch and prone recoil control, which makes this thing extra accurate, especially with the compensator on there. If we're going to run this in crouch or prone, it's going to be basically very close to no recoil as you can get the cons here are going to be the movement speed and the aim down sight speed which again aim down sight speed not a problem with this because we have a tack laser and the base barrel we're not adding too much extra weight to the weapon itself minus the magazine size so customization for the reticle here we're going to run the chevron tactical and they updated this recently so if i'm just using the holographic sight i'll just get a yellow dot so very clean sight picture for the eotech uh, the holographic and then obviously we can toggle to that zoomed view if we need to so this is our final version of the mark 17 or the scar heavy standard barrel length this is mainly for closer quarters engagements is what i wanted to build this for but again we have the ability to tap fire at longer ranges with that four times flip very deadly weapon here this is this is probably one of my favorite builds of the scar now i'm running a very unconventional kit with this i'm going to be running ghost right off the bat we're going to be running the strella for vehicles and then I'm running Double Time, Ghost, and Amped, Proxy Mines, and the Heartbeat. So we will not need to get any more than one loadout drop here in Solos. This is going to work out really, really well. And then for our operator here, we are running Arctic Ops D-Day. So we get that Delta look on our operator. Delta operator with a SCAR is basically a must in my mind. D-Day is awesome looking operator, especially with the SCAR. And he's got that Strella there, so he looks awesome. So there is our SCAR H. Now, how to outplay the meta here with the Scar Heavy. Again, Statistically Exclusive Ace did a video on this the other day, how how really this needs buffs and how the TTK and everything. Shots on this, I'll link his video down below. It's it's statistically a weapon that needs to be buffed. So I'll show you how to use this thing effectively. Let's go ahead now. You can see here the final version. Very aesthetically pleasing. Let's go ahead now and jump into the solo gameplay, and I'll show you how to outplay the meta with the Scar H. So here we go, dropping in, and we're going to drop right in onto TV Station. And this is really one of my favorite drop points uh, from past seasons. I don't drop here too much nowadays, but dropping in here, not going to have the best start here. I drop in, unfortunately, I only have a pistol, and I shot this guy first. However, he got too many shit. He actually hit more than I, you know, I just missed a few shots, unfortunately. Downside with the 1911 here with Cold War integration is that you only have eight shots. So you can see I got caught in the reload animation. Uh, I just missed too many shots. You can't really afford to miss in those close quarters. So I win my gulag pretty handedly. And I'm back over here. I landed all the way over at port. Just trying to loot up, get enough money to get this loadout drop. And I'm hearing footsteps. So this guy doesn't hear me up there. Um, he ran right through and I'm able to down him. He had a self res, so I'm going to go over and clean him up. He was getting that objective there. You can see there the recon, which I did see when I came over to this area. Um, so I was trying to lay a little bit low, got up there and, and uh, looted, and that's where I heard him. So here, I looped all the way around, and I was getting shot at by this guy with an M16, and there's some other guys go going down, engaging on the, on the left-hand side. So I'm going to sneak up on this guy, use my dead silence. He didn't hear me coming, um, and I'm able to take him out. I get in some more engagements there, and I loop all the way back around here after I get my loadout. So here's the scar. I hear some footsteps. And I figured out, trying to figure out if it's up top or down low. And again, not sure if he had three plates or not, but you can see, I mean, it's a very, it's still a very quick TTK. Now that they're raising that TTK level with a lot of the weapon nerfs that they're doing to bring that TTK back in line with where it used to be. Um, so I'm able to take him out very quickly, especially at that range with the scar. Again, we just have this thing built for very good ergo and very good recoil control. Um, we don't want to be charging in to people like we're running an SMG or anything though. So here I'm gonna run this uh, recon droid and I can see there's one guy over here. So here's an example of just using this zoomed optic here with a flip. So I'm able to break him and I should have tap fired him but he was scoping me, I saw the glint so I didn't wanna take that extra time 
uh, to give him the opportunity to line up a headshot. Another guy, he just down below me that got up. And again, he peaked me really quick. Obviously, he has a car 98. I can hear it. I'm able to self-res. So I'm fine. I'm going to hold this roof. I have good advantage here. This is the guy, it seems like, that he initially downed with that car 98. So I'm going to start engaging. I'm going to shoot this Strella at him, trying to... Uh, to get him beyond that barrier, however, I cannot. So I'm gonna put a few rounds at him, hit him with two Strellas, I'm hurting him. Uh, not able to get the kill though, and here I'm just trying to switch and get a different angle. And right there, my proxy goes off. So this guy tried to push me. I don't know who this guy was. This was a different guy that, this was not the sniper from earlier. Someone else tried to push up here. Luckily, I think he only had the two plates, so the proxy was able to get him. Now, fast forward a little bit more. That car 98 sniper moved over to that big blue building, which is now the big red building. So you can see me looking at that with the Strella. And I was firing a few rounds over there, trying to get rid of him. Um, and here I hear somebody. So here, this guy again is over here. Uh, he looped back up, and again, the, the Scar H there. Close quarters, I'm able to get a couple head, at least one, one headshot in there. And I'm able to just jump over that bear and hip fire him. I had to really go after him at that point because I was in kind of at a disadvantage if I didn't. Um, again, you can see engaging that sniper. So here, a few seconds later, I, I've i been playing a little bit too much Battlefield 4 lately. I accidentally switched to single fire, trying to take out a different weapon. I'm gonna switch back to full auto. You can see that guy coming back from Gulag just down him very, very quickly, very accurately. Um, this, this version of the Scar, I think, may be my favorite so far. It's uh, a lot of fun to use. So here, again, I heard a car, and there's where the Strella comes in. Just vehicle meta kind of out the window, especially since they reduced the number of trucks on the map. Um, I feel a lot more confident now, even with the tr any trucks around, because I have the Strella. I can still, if I have full rockets, I'll be able to eat through those trophy systems. So here, I have a guy in the heartbeat. And I'm pretty sure he's up top on the bridge. I think it's the guy I killed earlier. And here he just hopped over. And it is the same guy I killed just a little bit ago here. He landed on his stuff, which good play by him. I'm not sure if he probably didn't see me when he came in. Um, and luckily I had him on heartbeat, so I was able to just kind of wait for him to expose himself. You can see with this version of the Scar, you don't really want to be rushing or pushing too much. Um, I'm going to take the fights on my term because I don't have the best weapon. Now here, I accidentally fell down. You can see I broke him. I meant to turn and get him, um, but I fell down. Luckily, I had to deploy my chute. I'm not sure if I was going to make that drop without killing myself. So thankfully, I broke him already, and it was an easy kill and cleanup. So back up to the roof. Somehow, I'm able to navigate back up here without getting killed. And again, I've got some people on heartbeat moving around around me. So I'm picking them up here and there as they're shifting angles. I'm trying to move around so I can get them back on the heartbeat to figure out where they are. And I can hear the fire down below and right here I catch one coming in again just crushed him very easily he downed a guy below me he just self rezzed so I'm listening and again quick kill he obviously didn't have any plates so it was even quicker um, but just patrolling this area playing to the weapons strength I'm able to patrol this area and I have a very hard hitting weapon for close to medium range so here I picked up a car 98 from somebody that had that I had killed up here earlier I dropped my Strella because I was engaging the guy over on the big red roof earlier too. So I kind of have my Strella there when I need it. And I was picking this up. So you can see there the Car 98, just a, almost an unfair sniper rifle. I really, if you guys follow me, you know I don't like that weapon. And you can see there, it's just very easy to use. Really kind of a low skill weapon, which is fine. You need those in COD. So here are the circle shifts. And here's an example of just what not to do. I full out of this a little bit too quickly instead of uh, taking my time with those bursts. But regardless, I'm able to kill him. 1v1 now. I have 14 kills. And uh, this is an easy play, really. I know he's below me to my left slightly. So my idea here is to get over here on this uh, grass and just kind of hold that. And I make you'll see some mistakes that I made here. Now, I can hear him to my left. So I'm going to throw a grenade, and unfortunately there, I didn't realize that they put boxes there so you can get up there now, so I didn't realize those were there. Um, I made a, I should have played that a little bit more cautiously, um, that was my mistake, but again, if I didn't remember there was boxes there, so he was able to get up there, he had an MP5, which is going to be the scar in those close quarters engagements all day. Um, I was able to break him though. If I hadn't gotten caught in that animation for the 
for the uh, grenade, I think I would have been able to kill him. But again, a 14 kill gameplay. I, I said a good game to the guy after. Um, really good play by him. You know, I, he caught me off guard. But again, you can see here the Scar H, very, very viable, especially this build. This is definitely my favorite build. I was able to get 14 kills with this thing. Um, one of my better solo games. It would have been better if I was able to get the 15 kill win. But again, that's just user error. I played it I played it poorly at the end. But a lot of fun to use, and it just shows you don't need meta weapons to be successful in the game. This Scar build is very unconventional, very off meta. And again, I was able to have very successful gameplay with this. And again, the only other issue here is the long range meta and the vehicle meta. However, uh, I'm able to really take care of that with the Strella. So let me know down below what you guys think here. This is the Scar H for standard edition barrel, standard length barrel, mainly for CQ engagements. So we're going close to beating with this thing, very ergo friendly. Um, let me know what you guys think down below. Till next time, this is Buffner Gaming, out.